be right guys done some more work to the Kubota as you can see we've got this side panel off now um, it's looking pretty bare we've stripped her pretty well so I'll let you know what we've got up to we've uh, painted the counterweight tidied up the bar work a little bit painted our back cover got orange overspray on that but that's okay that'll come off um, I went in today and got a hydraulic return filter apparently when you change the hydraulic oil you need one of these it's a hydraulic return filter with a bypass so that goes on the end of this beast here so to get that out um, you remove this hose here which will leak oil so be mindful of that uh, you need to drain your hydraulic tank. Now I bought 20 litres of um, fresh hydraulic oil for this job. I've only just cracked the bolt down there. See the, should be able to see the hydraulic oil down in there. Yep. So, oh, well, see there's a return filter on that. Do be careful there's an O-ring on that surface. This is a steel tank. Uh, you've also got to undo the bracketry which holds up the top of the diesel tank. So we'll see if we can Ooh, that's not oil. That looks a lot like water, but it's not mixed in there well. Doesn't smell like hydraulic oil either. All right, it's either going to go well or get messy. Went all right. Put the plug ready, don't know if this bucket's going to be big enough. About to chicken out. Bucket's not big enough. <laughs> okay, we nearly got it all out, I reckon. Hydraulic oil always smells so funky. Right, I'm gonna clean up and grab another bucket. Alright, we've pretty much got it empty. Nearly lost the hose clamp. Clean this bit up. Don't let that fall in the tank. So we've got another hose there that's probably going to have to come off, I reckon. There's our return filter. I've got to get that hose clamp undone, but I'm really worried about that hose falling down. So we just might see if we can stretch that up. So that must be the return off the valve body.
Hose clamp's coming off. Alright guys, like that, we got a Oh, there's a suction filter as well. Yeah, so there's the other filter. I believe that one's like a mesh. Whereas this one's a cartridge. So we'll put that down on something so it's not dripping crap everywhere. Let the crap run off. Yeah, okay, so that is just a mesh screen, guys. So that's good. I'm replacing the right filter. I was worried about um, what filter to replace as the uh, return filter, which is the one we're replacing, actually has a cartridge in it. So the return fluid from here and the... So that's the pump bypass, and the other side is the return from the valve body. And obviously all of the moving parts. So uh, we're replacing the right one, so I'm really happy about that. I think I'm going to give it another 10-15 minutes just to drip and get all the last stuff out of the bottom of it. I don't want to add a degreaser or an anything like that, um, just in case I can't get it out again. Um, while I'm doing that, let's see if we can get this uh, old return filter off. And um, see how we go at putting the new one on. Ooh, well, that's tight. Here we go. So these aren't just normal multi-grips. See, these are plumbing ones that have got a hex in them. The beauty of these is you can actually really hang on to a, uh, a hexagonal thread. Don't ever use normal ones on something that's good. Now, the hydraulic service on this machine may actually change the way it operates. Um, 
we're currently up to just under 2700 hours so I'm going to actually wrap this up and we're going to open this up another day on camera and see if we can see any bits of metal in there um, as when pumps wear out they're kind of like they're, well, the, well, most hydraulic pumps are a gear pump and um, yeah I'd just really like to know if there's anything actually stuck inside this so uh, we'll unwrap this another day I'll cut it open with some big tube cutters and uh, we'll suss out what's going on so we bought a genuine Kubota one today these are like $135 but there's a good chance that I probably won't actually do this one again so there's a relief spring in the base of it by the looks of things so it looks as though it must be able to relieve pressure or something so yeah that's what the new one looks like the beauty of doing working on stuff that's hydraulic is like that's look at how clean that is I don't have to do anything to keep that clean that's beautiful so we're gonna just gently screw that on like so and just give it a bit of a nip with the wrench smash the GoPro on the way through and we're back okay so there's our new hydraulic return filter reinstalled on the machine um, we've nearly stopped dripping so we can actually start reinstalling this part on the top what we might do is just clean that surface up with a fresh rag so I'll grab a fresh rag and we'll come back and clean that up okay we're back we're just gonna make sure that o-ring stays where it is someone out there is letting off fireworks I'm just going to clean up this surface before we bolt our thing back together now remember we've got to get our line back on that point which is the return from the valve body and we've got to get this line back on because these are our returns that go back through the filter and into the hydraulic oil so this thing's a little bit different it doesn't filter it before it gets to the hydraulic pump aside from that mesh screen that mesh screen should never have anything in it it should always be happy days the idea is is that the mesh screen stops big birds and rocks as uh, dad used to say to me that catches big birds and rocks before they get to the hydraulic pump so that's literally that filters on like a 32 millimeter pipe maybe it's like a radiator hose that big one there and that goes straight to the hydraulic pump so that's where it picks it up and that's when it starts making multi levels of high pressure out the back side of it so uh, let's get the uh, return back in there and uh, I'll come back because I'm going to have to wrestle that pipe back on so we might use a little bit of hydraulic oil on the inside of that pipe it's all relatively clean in there put a bit of return on that return line there I'll make sure my hands are nice and clean so I've got grip to grab hold of it we'll slide that up do that clamp back up and then we'll look at this bit okay well I should have just filmed that because that took about 15 seconds really quite easy um, touch wood this has actually been quite good to work on so far I can't complain yet this one's already got heaps of hydraulic oil. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's just bubbles. A bit paranoid looking for metal. I'll take a scrape just in case. No, it's just bubbles. Okay. It just looked horrible on the under the LED light. So, get this other return line on here. 
hose clamp back up where it was. It's the best option always. Let's do that up. Make sure you put the bung plug in before you fill it up. I apologise for sounding like I was kind of winging it because I kind of was, like just um, with the return filter in the bottom, with the suction filter. I mean, I did know there was a suction filter. I'd never seen it. Yeah, this is kind of new to me. Um, I understand principles of hydraulic systems, but I'm not going to lie and pretend that I'm a heavy vehicle mechanic or whatever you would be to do this kind of job. So we're actually going to do something smart here. We'll put that lid there so you can't possibly drop a bolt in. I'm just going to gently start all these in here. We're going to just do them up with the ratchet. Okay, I'm going to come back. I'll do this with two hands. All right. If you don't have one of these, I'd probably get a fuel one. This one is an old one. These things are just... You know how when you're doing some mechanical work, you just get taxed by all day swinging wrenches. You just don't have that issue when you've got one of these. Saves you so many movements. There's probably a torque rating for them. I don't know it. I'm not going to look it up. They are on. Right, we need to put our bolts back in this before we forget the fuel tank there. Two of the larger bolts which were 14 mil 12 mil 14 mil so that's that's how you do the whole internal part of the hydraulic oil change so. it'll be interesting when we cut the filter apart later um, See what we're working with. It's all Milwaukee. All Milwaukee everywhere. Right. Do I tighten that? Yes, I did. That's tight down there. There's our empty hydraulic tank. It's only a little plastic bung. Let's put the bottom bung back in. First, let's have a look at it. It's all pretty clean and nice. Anytime you do jobs like this, you're going to want a lot of rags. Just so you can keep your stuff clean. Always clean your seating surface. There could be mud and stuff on it. Chances of it getting up and into the pump are slim. But the reason that this has a couple of filters is because obviously stuff needs to be clean. So, setting one's really gentle. Now I'll just bump it up a little bit. Setting two to uh, finish it off. So this is an Ajax spray and wipe. This is actually Atlantic Petroleum based super heavy duty degreaser. So it smells a little bit like kerosene, but it's not. Be cool if spray and wipe did this because it'd be cheaper. Look at that crap come off. Stuff. 
Now I say this with like a bit of uh, sarcasm, but fingers crossed I won't have to actually open this ever again. So clean it up once while I've got it open and we can leave it alone. What's this stuff gonna get that off? Yeah, cool. Clean me overspray off. So yeah, probably don't leave that on paint. That stuff's powerful. Righto, so. Getting a 20 litre drum of hydraulic fluid. Now, the, it's not completely empty, the system. To completely empty the system, I don't know how you would do that. Um, you probably have to take the pump out, take the rams off, squeeze everything shut. So at the moment we've got one ram wide open, blade rams off, so that's one less. That ram half open, top ram half open, dipper arm, I mean um, bucket ram is shut. So yeah, and you've got your gear motors, they've all got all up and down to them. So a fluid change isn't a complete change. That being said, there should be nothing in the fluid um, because it's got a return filter. It should just be the yeah, most of the fluid's worn out. The other stuff will mix in with it. There's no contaminants and crap in the fluid, at the, to my knowledge. It's all pretty good in there. So, uh, yeah. Right, let's get uh, fresh oil in there. Okay, then what you want to do is get a clean funnel. If you don't have a clean funnel, make a clean funnel. Ideally, one that wasn't that long would be good. Or we'll put a drum tap in the bottom of your... 20 litre drum, but we're going to have to go the difficult way, because we're not set up as a full blown mechanical workshop, just a bloke who makes YouTube videos. Okay, just had a brainwave. Because it's so thick, it's sealing the... I'm gonna open up this vent. Hopefully we'll get it in there faster so I don't have to hold the drum for so long. So that's venting back through my filter. Almost got a constant pour up there. Right, my return filter's under oil by the sound of that. Starting to see it on the sight glass. Might stop there for a minute and let it settle. Yep, yeah, that's pretty well where we were. So we'll stop there for a minute. Put this hose back on. Because the last thing I want to do is start it with that hose off. That will make me more than angry. Actually spending quite a bit of money on the poor little thing at the moment. Um, tidying it up. How good does that fresh oil look? See down in there? It normally looks better on video than it does on the uh, little camera. Alright guys, let's see what happens. Okay, suck some in. No error codes, it's circulating it.
certainly dropped down a bit. That was obviously the stuff that I managed that I managed to get out. So I gave it a few little key bumps. Um, I think I videoed that just to get that little bit extra out. So hopefully that wasn't harsh on the hydraulic pump. I'm sure I'll find out if it fails. And then I'll cry because they're like three grand. But yeah, we need some more fluid in there. We'll stick some more in just until we cover that return filter, which is about where we are on the gauge. And then I'm going to run it for 10 minutes or so, let it get warm, and um, see what it looks like. I'll just fill this up a bit more. Hope you guys are enjoying a couple of long form videos. Hello, a lot of my battery loving people probably don't care too much, but um, you know, the title of the video is in the video. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. That's uh, that's all completely up to you. I know I've got plenty of people that make videos that I don't watch if I don't like them. So let's fire her back up. Let it run for a bit. <laughs> Got to get the air out of the system if there is any. We've engaged that part. Okay, like that, we've got all three rams shut. We're by no means over full at that stage. Oil's dirtied a little bit, but only like I'm being pretty picky.
might do is I might let that run for a bit until the uh, tank has some temperature in it and that way if there is any moisture or anything like that it has the option to steam up out of the tank I doubt that there would be any moisture because it's pretty it's nice and clean in there and nothing's milky looking I don't know how much hydraulic oil eats moisture but we'll do that so uh, yeah I'll leave it run until it's up to operating temp the engine's almost up to operating temp because I had it running I did run it before I dropped the hydraulic fluid just because I knew it would be quicker. Um, while we do this, we'll let it warm up, up to operating temperature. I've also got an engine oil and filter as well. So we're going to do an engine service at the same time. So I'll be back in a second. Okay. Okay, so it's time to do an engine oil change. The only problem is, with the way I've got it orientated at the moment, we can't actually get to the drain bung. It's actually got a remote drain. We're just going to have to crawl her along a bit and then turn her around. So, put the seat back out of the way for the time being. unlock it so we'll be able to get to that now the oil filters are just the cutest little things they're like tiny all right that's all warm now so the oil's going to fly out which is what we want get the drain pan and i'll show you where the bung is okay plug is 19 mil or three quarter in imperial Out she comes. Okay, so when we take the cap off, it should speed up. That's quite well sealed with its oil cap. Alright, let's grab the oil filter. Oil filter. Look at how cute it is. Genuine Kubota. We might need some multi grips. just to 
start it moving. Sliding on our rubber. We're moving. Yeah, we got a we got a loose. Uh, I believe it holds 3.6 litres. So we just we just let that drain back and then we'll uh, look at getting it out. I uh, recently cleaned out the uh, water trap here as well, so that's that's all sweet. We'll come back when we uh, when we've run out of oil. All right, my filter back in there. One thing I don't like about where the filter is is it drains down into the body of the machine down there. So that's a little bit messy, but anyway, is what it is. Nothing, some rags and degrees I can't fix. This is the engine oil fill up top. Funnel up there. I'm gonna do a coolant flush, but I'm not gonna do it tonight. I just found that, I didn't realize it had another fuel filter. Where is it, there, no, there. It's another fuel filter. That being said, I don't think anything's ever gonna get through the water and settling trap through that fuel filter and the other one, so I'm not super, I'm super worried about that. I've got to do this whole thing on other degrees and wash, so I'm not too worried about that oil in there. Um, but down the bottom there, you might be able to see a hose with a hose clamp on the end of it. That's actually the drain for the radiator, which is like awesome. Awesome that you can just get it out from underneath. So we've put some oil in there now. Let's uh, see how close we are to full. Oh yeah, now we're in. All right, spot on the stick. Should be wearing my helmet cam. At least you know there's no CGI, guys. Oh no, I'm only just on the stick. Pop some more in. I'll come back when she's right, when we go to start it. All right, she's all in. She's up to a good level. We'll put the cap back on. You don't want to lose that. I'm going to give this a degrees from above and um, hose it out tomorrow. The degrees that I've got, I'll make a separate video about that at some stage, but that's like super powerful. So uh, we want to look and make sure that we don't get an oil lot. Good guys, that's we're gonna call that done for this video. It's engine oil service, hydraulic oil service, and filters for both. Uh, air filter's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think we're gonna bother with that. Next video we're gonna do hub motors and we're gonna do run out of words. Cool it. So yeah, that's what's uh that's what we're up to. That's what we've got to. It's um, it's going well. Uh, I've pulled a lot of pieces off this excavator, so I'm going to start putting 
things back together so I can start putting doors back on etc and then uh, next thing is we're going to order bushes measure pins for the rest of it I'm going to give that all a clean up in there and call it a day so uh, hopefully that means we'll be back to working with it we've got some work to do next week um, and yeah that should be honky dory we'll give it all a grease up after we've given it a proper clean because you just end up with smeary grease on everything it's just and the looser it gets the worse that gets so yeah you uh you're kind of hamstrung to keeping it clean so i'm gonna put all our doors back on today before i go inside i'm starting to hang for some dinner it's been uh that's like 11 o'clock at night, so it's about dinner time. Um, we'll uh, put it all back together and see what it's like. I've never changed the coolant. Um, it looked brand new when I got it. That I know that's not an indication of whether it's quality or not. Um, the only thing I've ever done is serviced it twice, oil serviced it twice. Uh, when I've serviced it twice, I've done fuel filters twice. It's never had an air cleaner, but that's been out and blown out numerous times, and it's got an inner as well. And I've also cleaned out this diesel separator numerous times. So this is the first hydraulic service. Um, so otherwise, I have not done anything to this machine. This is super reliable. We're at 2,670 odd hours. Awesome, just excellent machine. Uh, I rate this U17 Kubota so highly. This thing makes me so much money because it's so reliable. We're going to tidy these few bits up, tidy the pins up, finish painting it, and then, fingers crossed, we shan't, shouldn't look at it until we service it again in another 250 hours, and then just keep going. I actually own a spare alternator. I wouldn't mind buying a starter motor at this stage um, because that would be nice to have. But yeah, this is this is an awesome thing. Good on fuel, powerful enough, um, light goes straight in the back of my truck. It's happy days. So, as you probably know, I really love this Kubota. Um, it's just I haven't yet um, had something that I can't take off. Touch wood. I haven't needed special tools. Everything I've done is with a shifter, a pair of multi-grips, a couple of impact wrenches, and a basic toolkit. Nothing has been outside of this yet. If that changes, I will, of course, update you guys. This is, this is all I've used. A bunch of metric sockets and a ring spanner in metric as well these are good to work on if you can get your hands on one of these to go and start doing some work with it even if it's got a couple of thousand more hours than this on it see it's got three thousand hours on it who cares it's not a big deal you can go out there and get a bit going on batteries untouched you know like only thing i've ever done that was major was tracks and they were $1,100, but the local Kubota dealer keeps these ones, which were aftermarkets. And they also keep the genuine Kubotas. Um, yeah. Bushes and pins is going to be a labour-intensive job, just because everything's a little bit heavier. Uh, oh, and I delivered my ram cylinder, which is broken, to... A good friend of mine, his buddy, has a workshop and he reckons he can cut the back off the ram. So he's basically going to chop the ram there, replace that bit, thread a new one of these up, put new seals on the rod and give it back to me. He reckons it's going to be like a five or $600 job. Kubota quoted me $2,000 plus freight for a new ram. Get out there and find some guys that can actually do some work, guys. I've got a full manual for all the pins and bushes, so we've got all measurements for them. I've got to order them from a company in Melbourne. 
and then everything goes back together. Blade back on, etc. But next week we're going to work without the blade. We're not going to need it. I haven't been able to use it for months anyway. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This is just part two of the rebirth of the Kubota. There was nothing broken on it, but you've got to spend money on these things so they don't fall in one big heap at the end. So I want to use this machine for years to come and this will just end up being the tight access machine. Um, it may even end up with a log splitter or something on the end of it, but that's, that's where we're at. Thanks for watching. Go and watch some other videos, subscribe. I've got a whole earth moving playlist which this will be featured in and plenty of other videos of earth moving stuff. And uh, I look forward to bringing you more of these long, longer form videos now I've got this awesome workshop. And uh, yeah, really in a good headspace to be making videos. So thank you guys. Catch you on the next one. If you're still watching now, you're awesome. Give us a thumbs up. See ya.